Amen. Yeah, Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. Our Lady of the Rosary. Amen. Name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At the beginning of this year, a new, unknown, and lethal virus began spreading throughout the world. Some doctors and medical technicians believed it originated in China. Others have disputed this claim. Nevertheless, we do know that by late January and early February, the virus began wreaking havoc in Europe, especially in Italy and Spain. Then it reached our shores at the beginning of March. How it got here, we do not know for sure at this time. But we do know, though, that it has been and is systematically infecting and killing thousands of Americans. And if it is not stopped or mitigated, it has the potential to kill about 200,000 persons, which is about the same number of people who died when the first atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, Japan. <clears throat> For this reason, President Trump stated at a national press conference he held on Monday of this week that our country is in the midst of a great national trial, unlike we have ever faced before. We are at war with a deadly virus, he stressed. <clears throat> Therefore, success in this fight will require the full measure of our collected strength love and devotion. However, as he went on to say, encouragingly, each of us has the power through our own choices and actions to save lives and rescue the most vulnerable among us. So in light of these statements, we are led to ask ourselves, what can we do to end the scourge caused by this pandemic? <clears throat> The answer is as simple as it will be effective, namely to pray the rosary as often and as devoutly as we can. <clears throat> it might sound simplistic to say this, and indeed it is, but there is scientific documented evidence that can prove conclusively that the rosary has the power to protect us from the most deadly of physical, biological, spiritual, and moral evils even that of an atomic bomb blast. The lethal effects of radiation and effects <coughs> an infection from a deadly virus. <coughs> Some of you may know already about how the rosary protected the Jesuits at Hiroshima from near certain death by an atomic bomb blast but it is more than worthwhile to repeat the details of their miraculous survival in the context of the coronavirus pandemic. Because by doing so, we can be reminded of our pressing need to seek the protection and intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary at all times by means of the Most Holy Rosary. So let us review now what happened at Hiroshima, Japan almost 75 years ago, the place where the first atomic bomb in history was exploded. It was dropped on this city on August the 6th of 1945 at 8.15 in the morning. When the bomb hit, houses and buildings from miles around were leveled. <clears throat> Father Hubert Schiffer, one of the Jesuits who was in the rectory on that dreadful day, described the scene by writing that in one frightful second, a proud city of a half a million souls was wiped out from the face of the earth. Nothing remained but an atomic desert, and the word Hiroshima from that time onwards became a symbol of total destruction. Yet just eight city blocks from ground zero, that is the point where the bomb landed and detonated, the Jesuit rectory located next to Our Lady 
of the Assumption Catholic Church remain standing and for the most part undamaged. What's more, the four Jesuit priests who were inside the rectory at the time the bomb exploded not only remained alive, but also escaped serious injury from either the bomb blast itself or the effects of the deadly radiation. How can we explain then the miraculous survival of these Jesuit priests? The answer can be given in one word, the rosary. It is the only logical explanation possible, since each one of those priests, as they later publicly testified, had been praying the rosary daily before the bomb was dropped. In fact, they issued a public statement to this effect at the International Eucharistic Congress that was held in Philadelphia in 1976, which read, we believe we survived because we prayed the rosary daily in that rectory. So we can be sure that the Blessed Mother as reward for the faith and fidelity of those dedicated Jesuits for praying the rosary shielded each one of them with her protective mantle, not only from the deadly effects of the violent bomb blast, but above all from the poisonous radiation as well. In fact, more than 30 years after the bomb had been dropped, all of the priests who had been in the rectory on that faithful day were alive and well. Yet not one of them, to the amazement of the many scientists, medical specialists, and doctors who had interviewed and examined them more than 200 times, could determine how those priests could have escaped serious injury from the hellish power of the bomb blast, as well as the residual effects of the radiation. For from a purely scientific point of view, what happened to those Jesuits at Hiroshima still defies human logic, not to mention the laws of physics and biology. In short, only a miracle can explain their survival. They should have all died when the bomb was dropped or shortly afterwards from the radiation. The great lesson that we can learn from the Jesuits at Hiroshima then is that if Mary protected them from being killed by an atomic bomb because they prayed the rosary every day, then she can and will protect us, our families and our homes from being contaminated or infected by the coronavirus if we also, like they did, pray the rosary every day. But this leads us to ask ourselves though, why is it that the rosary is such a powerful prayer? How could it be responsible for preserving the lives of just four priests 75 years ago from the most violent, the most destructive, and the most lethal weapon that has ever been unleashed upon mankind since the creation of the world. How can the rosary now, today, preserve our lives from contamination by a deadly virus that seems to be spreading throughout the world like wildfire and taking tens of thousands of lives with it in the process? Well, you could say there are three reasons which can explain why the rosary is such a powerful prayer. Three reasons that can explain why the rosary not only protected the Jesuits from the bombast, but also why it can protect us today from the virus. <clears throat> First of all, and above all, the rosary is so powerful because it is Mary's favorite prayer. In fact, Pope St. Pius X once said, of all the prayers, the rosary is not only the richest in graces, but it is the one most pleasing to Mary. It can be no accident then that Mary 
told us at Fatima through the three shepherd children, not just once, but six successive times at each one of her apparitions to pray the rosary every day in the world, for peace in the world and an end to war. So we can be absolutely certain that there will be no peace either in the world at large or in our hearts unless and until more people pray the rosary more often with greater faith and devotion. The second reason the rosary is so powerful follows directly from the first, namely the fact that Mary is the mediatrix of all graces. In fact, as St. Bernardine once put it, from the moment Mary conceived Christ, she began to possess, so to speak, a certain authority over the actions of the Holy Spirit in the world. And this in such a way that no one receives any grace from God except through her mediation. <clears throat> Therefore, all the gifts and graces of the Holy Spirit are distributed by her to whom she pleases, when she pleases, and in the quantity and measure she pleases. In other words, as St. Louis de Montfort says, no heavenly gift is given to us that does not pass through Mary's hands. In short, as Pope Leo the 13th once said, according to the will of God, nothing is granted to us except through Mary. Or as St. Bernard puts it more strongly still, it is the will of God that we should receive all our graces through Mary. Or as he goes on to explain, God has filled Mary with all the graces we will ever need so that through her we may receive by her means, like through a channel, every good thing that comes to us. So for all these reasons, we should ask Mary, not only for the graces we will need to protect ourselves from contamination from the coronavirus, but above all, for the graces that our nations and the world will need to end this pandemic scourge as soon as possible. In fact, Mary has the power to stop this plague dead in its tracks. If we pray to her for this grace by means of the rosary, she can do it. <clears throat> she can stop it just as easily and as swiftly as she can crush the head of Satan. Where St. Bernard puts it so powerfully and beautifully, <clears throat> without Mary, we cannot succeed. With her, we cannot fail. Finally, the rosary is such a powerful prayer because it can at one and the same time draw the angels to us while driving away the devils. In fact, as St. Alphonsus puts it, every time we pray a Hail Mary, <clears throat> the angels are drawn to us like a moth is to light while the devils are driven away like smoke before the wind. Whereas Blessed Alan de la Roche explains, who was both a disciple of St. Dominic and a great promoter of the rosary. Just as heaven rejoices when the Hail Mary is prayed, so too the devils tremble and run away when they hear it. And why is this? <clears throat> it is because Mary is the queen of the angels. Therefore, they exist to honor her, to love her and serve her. So they cannot be but pleased and attracted to us <clears throat> whenever they hear us honoring her by praying her favorite prayer. While on the other hand, there is no one in heaven or on earth that the devils fear more than Mary. In fact, St. Bridget <clears throat> tells us in her book of Revelations that God made Mary so powerful over the devils that she can terrify them with a single glance. <clears throat> so for all these reasons, whenever we pray the rosary, together in a group, it seems to the devil, St. Louis de Montfort has noted, as if a whole army is attacking him. And so if the rosary is such a powerful means of not only 
attracting the help of the holy angels, but also driving away the devils, we can understand why Pope Pius IX once said, if I had an army to, to pray the rosary, I could conquer the world. So we can be confident that we too can conquer the coronavirus if we pray the rosary. So all this <clears throat> leads us to ask ourselves, if I'm praying the rosary regularly, what more could I do that would help me to pray it more effectively during this time of trial? Well, there are five things we can do. First, we should try to pray it more attentively. So we should resolve to do this, to make a serious effort to keep our minds focused firmly on the mystery that we are meditating upon. For as we know from experience, it's all too easy to give into distractions and lapse into daydreaming if we're not careful while praying. So before we begin to pray, we should place ourselves in the presence of God by making a good act of contrition. And further, it's important to know if we become careless and let our minds wander, by merely looking at our rosary beads from time to time, we can refocus our attention and become recollected again. What's more, to help us pray more attentively it can be helpful if we try to imagine, as St. Louis de Montfort recommends, that our guardian angel is standing at our right side, taking all our Hail Marys as if, if they are well said, and using them like so many roses to make crowns for Mary. While at our left side, there is standing a devil who is ready to pounce upon every Hail Mary poorly prayed so he can accuse us of praying with distractions. So we must make a special effort during this time of crisis then to pray more attentively. But what really counts with the Lord is not so much the length of our prayers, but rather the love and the zeal with which they are prayed. So for this reason, St. Louis de Montfort once said that one single Hail Mary prayed well is worth more in the eyes of God than 150 that are prayed poorly. Now, yes, this statement made by a saint a great saint and a promoter of the rosary is indeed true, but at the same time, it can be said that a rosary prayed poorly is better than one not prayed at all. So we have to be careful then and not let the perfect become the enemy of the good. For sometimes, if we do not have the time to pray our rosary at a slow meditative pace, which is the ideal, of course, <clears throat> We can be tempted not to pray it at all. So we have to resist the temptation to excuse ourselves from praying our rosary because we don't believe we have the time to pray it as well as we could or should. The second thing we can do that will help us to pray our rosary more effectively is to pray it more meditatively. For if we do not pray it with meditation, then our rosary may be in danger of becoming a mere body without a soul, as Pope Paul VI once warned us. And then, if we are not careful, our rosary can all too easily degenerate into a mere mechanical repetition of phrases, as he put it. But for some of us, the seemingly endless repetition of Hail Marys can seem pointless. Why do we have to say so many of them? After all, didn't Jesus say, as the, pagan, as the critics of the rosaries point out, <clears throat> that we are not to babble our prayers like the pagans do, who think they will be heard because of their many words? So how can we answer then this all too common objection, especially if we ourselves might have been losing our faith in the power of the rosary during these dark days of the crisis. Well, Bishop Sheen has given us the answer to their objection. Once after he had finished giving a marriage preparation class, a Protestant woman who was attending the course with her Catholic fiance 
approached him after the class and said, I would never become a Catholic because you Catholics say the same words over and over again when you pray the rosary. And anyone who repeats themselves is not sincere. And so I would never believe anyone who repeats themselves and neither would God. To answer this objection, Bishop Sheen simply asked the woman if her fiance loved her. She said, yes, of course. How do you know this? The bishop asked. Because he told me, she said. And what did he say? He said, I love you. And when did he tell you this last? About an hour ago? Did he tell you this before? <clears throat> well, yes, last night. And what did he say? He said, I love you, but never before. He tells me this every night. <laughs> then do not believe him, Bishop Sheen said. He is repeating himself. He is not sincere. <laughs> So this little rosary shows us that the repetition of the Hail Mary while praying the rosary is not mere babbling, but rather it is a deep expression of our love for Mary. And so if our rosary is prayed in this way, it is capable of leading us to the heights of contemplation. For the often repeated words of the Hail Mary can act like a kind of background music. They can help us to meditate <coughs> more deeply on the major mysteries connected with the life of Christ. And so just as Gregorian chant and some kinds of classical music can calm our soul, making it possible for us to think more clearly and to pray more deeply, so too the praying of the rosary can have the same kind of effect <clears throat> both on our body and our soul. So for this reason, Pope St. John Paul once pointed out the praying of the rosary is the ideal means by which we can come to contemplate the face of Christ. The third thing that we can do that will help us to improve the power of our rosary is to pray it ecclesiastically. That is to pray it in union with certain approved groups or organizations within the church. For example, the World Apostolate of Fatima, the Legion of Mary, in the confraternity of the Holy Rosary. What's more, there are now some institutions on the internet that have begun to pray explicitly for an end to the coronavirus pandemic. For example, the organization known as Catholic Action for Faith and Family has over 150,000 persons who have pledged to pray the Rosary regularly with Cardinal Burke. The fourth thing that we can do that will help us to improve the power and effectiveness of our rosary is to pray it angelically. That is, we should unite our rosary with the prayers not only of our own guardian angel, but with the guardian angel of everyone in the whole world, as well as the prayers of all the angels in all the different choirs. That is, with all the heavenly hosts, with all the billions and billions, if not trillions of angels who constantly worship and praise the Lord in the hallways of heaven. For if we take the time and trouble it takes for us to invite the angels to pray with us, we can be confident that the power of our rosaries will be increased immensely. Finally, to magnify the influence of our rosary, we should pray it at night. For well, there's a special kind of intensity connected to prayer when it is made during the night hours, especially when it is made before the Blessed Sacrament. A special kind of intensity that is sometimes lacking during daylight hours. And the Church has, in fact, recognized the reality of the power of night prayer by scheduling prayer vigils every year on Holy Thursday, Holy Saturday, and Christmas Eve. And so when we make the extra sacrifice of praying the rosary late at night or early in the morning, we are imitating the example of the Lord who was known to pray all night.
And for this reason, we can be confident that he will be more open and disposed to hearing and answering our prayers when we make the extra effort, the extra sacrifice of praying at night. So for all these reasons, we could conclude that one of the most important things that we can do for our nation and the world at large at this particular point in time is simply to pray the rosary more attentively, more meditatively, more ecclesiastically, more angelically, and more nocturnally. Remember, just as Mary shielded the Jesuits at Hiroshima from the hellish effects of the atomic bomb blast and the deadly radiation, so too she can protect ourselves, our families, and our homes from the lethal effects of the coronavirus. The rosary then can shield and defend us not only from the greatest and the most deadly of physical and biological evils we could ever expect to face, but also the most dangerous or of spiritual and moral evils as well. In fact, St. Louis de Montfort has gone so far as to say, even if we are on the brink of damnation, even if we have one foot in hell, even if we have sold our soul to the devil, we will be converted, we will amend our life, we will be saved if we pray the rosary every day. The best insurance policy then we could ever hope to take out would be to pray as many rosaries as we could, not only for ourselves and our loved ones, but also for our country and the world at large during this pandemic. So today, let us resolve to pray at least one rosary every day, if we are not already doing so. And if we are already praying one, let's resolve to pray another. The rosary is without doubt the key to gaining Mary's powerful help, guidance, attention, and protection. And so, once we have been placed under her protective mantle, we will be shielded not only from the greatest of physical, biological, and moral evils, but also even from the combined hatred of all the devils in hell. For never has it ever been known, as St. Bernard tells us in that beautiful prayer known as the Memorare, that anyone who has implored the help of the Blessed Virgin Mary, fled to her protection, or sought her intercession, was ever left unaided. Our Lady of the Rosary, pray for us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit.